gosh, are you, are you, are you doing one of these without me? I can't believe this. I literally can't believe this. Why would you try to upstage me, my own daughter? Uh, this is unforgivable. Well, not that unforgivable. You can go, you can be a background character, it's fine. I can't believe this. Hello, welcome to the actual beginning of this. I was sitting on the pillow, it's fine. Welcome back to the Gaijin Sanctuary. This is episode four, four of Japan Story Times. This door is closed, right? Nope. It was opened by that much, technically not being shut. Well, it depends on what you want to define being shut as, but for the purposes of this being open and closed, I want, I want it closed. Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm already getting sidetracked. <laughs> Welcome to episode four. We're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about? Mm, what's, what's been going on recently, you know? Uh, I think I got a car, and uh, I think that's actually it, you know? So it'll just be a couple hours, <laughs> hopefully not a couple hours, of talking about a car. Unless I can think of anything else. I don't know, man. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this is the, the drink that we're going to have. It's a carton of milk tea because uh, it's the thing. A lot of people, I got a lot of people addicted to this back in the States. Why do we call America the states, but we don't call Japan the prefectures? Is it because it's the full name of America's United States of America and America just refers to all? Of it? Okay, never mind. Anyway, milk tea is hard to get in the states, the United States, because uh, you can only get it from like the Asian store, special Japanese store. Not not very common. So I'm gonna take advantage of being able to have a carton of it from the store by a walking bike. 10 minutes so here we go I don't know what color it's gonna be oh my gosh it's tea colored and it's gonna be in this little penguin mug hold on this this is what this is just a prop I'm gonna put it back now Oof, we're back that was just that, that's all I wanted I just wanted to because if I just was drinking a liquid in a mug you wouldn't know what it is especially since it's a weird it's first of all it has a picture of a penguin on it I was not showing the penguin to the camera, but yes, it has a picture of a penguin on it. And on the back, it has a message that just says, uh, this is random inspirational quotes. Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. Uh, I got this at the dollar store. <laughs> if you want, if you want good, uh, random English in Japan, then go, go to any dollar store. They will have something that does not make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it's inspirational, I suppose, but like, I don't know, man. It's it's it, why has it got a penguin on it too? <laughs> what the why? The, how does the penguin convey this message? Anyway, hell yeah, milk tea's good stuff. I've not gotten it like at all, which is why I was at the store and I'm like, what random thing should I drink for this episode? Because that's a thing, apparently. What did I drink last episode? I don't think I drank anything last episode. I remember episode two, I drank the, the Jello, <laughs> the, the Jello in a can, dude. Anyway, let's just get my phone because uh, I'm a Zoomer now. Look at me, mom, I'm a real Zoomer. Not that I need the phone. Well, do you care about the dates? Does anyone care about the dates? Because I was thinking about that. Anyway, focusing. <laughs> uh, I remember last episode was very, um all over the place and it took like three hours and uh let's not have that happen because all we have we just have one thing to talk about guys unless i can think of something else you, you guys know you guys know but i'm not gonna say it okay anyway <laughs> also look at this i gotta let's not spill all my stuff i got a there's a there's like a mic arm isn't that neato it clips to a chair which is not solidly clipped to so let's not move it around too much because it clips to like flat edges and the chair is currently like, has like a little slope like this. It kind of looks like this. So it has one flat thing, but not flat on the other. So we're just gonna keep it in place and not move it around too much. And especially because moving this around too much will cause the audio to go all crazy. But anyway, so yeah, I think I remember last time I was in the middle. So let, here, here's what happened last time, okay? Is that last episode was just a, a filler episode because it was just like random screwing around. It was fun. But it wasn't going to, like, it wasn't contributing to a grand narrative. So last time, uh, I was like, 
I, I did hiking, which I think I would have done had a lot better of a time at if I hadn't like, because basically I hate I hated the bike. The bike sucks. We're talking about the bike in past tense because I have gotten rid of the bike because so they 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 gave me this place and they like and they're like okay so for transportation here's this bike and the schools aren't that far away and. Uh, my rebuttal to that is one school is very far away and up a hill, so uh, not not fun, not something I can't do. But you know, I'm I'm a I'm a thinker, not a fighter. I can't, I don't want to do that. And also, not having a car, like not. I mean, most people when they think Japan, they're like, hey, train Tokyo, trains everywhere, don't need a car. And for Tokyo, yes, but for out in the middle of nowhere, I'm pointing, I'm gesturing to the window that you can't see. Out in the middle of nowhere? No, it's basically like ruralness, but with instead of cows, it's like rural. It's it's rural, okay. <laughs> it's not quite. I was gonna say it's like rural, like Eastern America, or whatever, with cows and not a whole lot else. But like, no, it's it's way different. It's got like Japanese houses and rice fields and huge ass mountains in the middle of the town. But basically, uh, not a whole lot of public transportation. So the car, the having not a car was very limiting. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get a car. <laughs> Hold on. I just burped out my own that last milk tea. So let's take another swig. There you go. Hydrate. Does tea have water in it? Tea has water in it. Tea is water. Soda is not, doesn't have any water in it. And maybe alcohol too. What is the alcohol? Anyway. <laughs> Need water. Make sure to hydrate everybody. Anyway, so I was like, okay, I need a car. So after, and I wasn't aware. I was, I was waiting for money because I was like, I wanted to make sure I had enough like down payment. And apparently that became an issue. So like right after my family left, I was like, okay, I want, I need, I want a car. So like basically like bef even before I recorded the last episode, I think. I started this process, but it was I didn't include it in the last episode because it, it fit in this episode. I was still halfway through. So basically, I just like it's a very long story on how to get on getting this car. So I will I will spare you a lot of the details. But basically, like I spent all of January trying to get this car because I was just like, I want just something cheap. You know, I'm not, it's not, I may or may not be here long term. I just need for the, something for the moment to get me from point A to point B. And then we'll be good, right? Japan is famous for having uh, K-cars. Or, I c there has to be a better name. Because K-car is just k -G dosha Which, g dosha is just car. And K means like compact. So I think, actually, I think the English name is compact car. But most weebs here call them uh, K cars, so we're continuing calling them K cars. Anyway, yeah, K cars very small, very cheap, uh, not very good at going fast or accelerating. But you know, you don't really need those things as long as it's better than a bike and can protect me from the elements. Because that was another thing that the bike that because like, I was doing the bike for a while. I did the bike the entire like from all from August to the end of uh january i was on the bike and like it was fine for the beginning but as soon as it started like snowing and getting really cold it was not fun at all <laughs> so that's that was an issue so yeah basically i spent all of january trying to get a car so basically i i went around to different places right and i ran into a roadblock hey get it car roadblock hey hey I just thought of that just now. I'm a genius. I may or may not be a genius. It's fine. But anyway, uh, yeah, the roadblock I ran into is that uh, I'm a I'm a foreigner, and uh, I just you, I, I can't you they, you might not give us money for a car. Was basically the issue is that I kept I couldn't get a loan for a car. I a two like i was my price range was like one or two thousand dollars roughly translated from yen and the bank was like we don't we don't give loans to foreigners and i'm like okay then <laughs> which is a thing by the way like i'm i'm on the fence of how upset i should be about that because on one end i'm like ah what's just because the risk i guess is that i 
take out a loan and then flee the country and don't pay it back but that's not how loans work like i don't know they need to get whatever technology they have for student loans because like no you, you can't just escape debt debt can like follow you you they have your numbers and id and whatever they can follow you to the ends of the earth like i don't understand this whole fear of running away it's just like but on the other end of hand of it like uh, if they say, okay, like, it is somewhat of a risk, I guess. It would be a pain in the butt to track you down if you left the country and went to, like, some random part of the world. Uh, let's just say Egypt. <laughs> I don't know why Egypt, you hiding in a pyramid, avoiding your $1,000 of debt. So they're like, we don't, we don't want to bother. So I do see the idea of, like, there's very few percentages of foreigners trying to take out loans. So, like, the bank is not losing any money at all by just saying, like, no, we're not, we're not, we're not bothering. We're, it's too much effort for, like, less than 1% of customers, you know? And that's also why um, uh, foreigners have issues getting apartments is because, like, the issue is that they could run without paying bills and, like, they're, and they're, they take up so little of the market that they can just afford to be like, okay, we're not taking the risk. <laughs> So it sucks, but I guess it's understandable. I don't know. Like it's still, uh, it still sucks though. So, uh, but that that took a while to figure out. It took a while of like going around to car places and then the car place saying like we can't give you a loan, like because like nobody knows about this, right? Because I was talking to several people and nobody like said hey. You can't get a loan from that place. Like I, just, so I just went to the place, and then the people were like, "Oh, hey, we'll sell you a car, no problem." And then I had to decide on a car, and then they, as they were getting the paperwork, they like they noticed the fine print it was like, "Oh yeah, no, it's not happening." <laughs> and then the bank took like a week and a half to get back. It was a nightmare. <laughs> but I found a. Uh, I found I found a fellow Gaijin in the city who sold me a car. It's not like just some random guy. He runs a business in the city and he sells car he sells used cars and he's very and uh he's very nice. He's he's a good guy. 10 out of 10. I'm not I'm not going to say his name cuz he doesn't isn't sponsoring this video cuz but other than that, uh good guy. <laughs> So basically, uh, yeah, he just there's a foreign guy. He runs a car place in the city, and he's like, so I found him like after several weeks of trying places nearby, because like having my car guy like be like an hour away is not very convenient, and it has not been very convenient. But you know, it's the only place I I can use, and he is a really nice guy, and everyone there is nice, and they they gave me can a lollipop. <laughs> I don't think they gave me a lollipop. They gave me some melon soda though. Melon soda is, always, is another good Japanese thing that I can't hardly find. They sell it all the time at, like, McDonald's and whatnot. Anyway, not off topic. This is why these videos take, like, 20 hours to make. <laughs> but the issue is... Not the issue. Oh, yeah, so the deal was I, I went to the city, and he was, like... I don't remember how I found this guy. I think it was, like, recommended by, like, some other people. And then I, w and I was, like, oh, well, if I'm having issues of getting a car because I'm a foreigner, let's try this foreign guy all the way out here and so basically he was like okay so i legally can't give you a loan because laws i guess i guess it's a law i don't i don't anyway he was like you can pay it i'm like i will have the money in like two three months because this was at the end of january and i'm like by like april or may i will have the money and he's like okay then you can just pay in three installments and i did that and uh i found i got uh do I have pictures of this, by the way? What pictures do I have? I have not planned photos at all. So let's just go see some photos. I have plenty of photos of my car. Here's my, I got a, I got a box car, a very tiny box car. It cost like, I don't remember. It was very, it was very, it was like, it was like 1400, not 1400, 14,000. 1,400, I think, 1,500-ish. I don't remember the numbers exactly off my head. But I knew, I knew the number off my, I knew the number. I had the number with me when I was doing budgets and whatnot. But I don't have it on me right now, and I did not write it down. Right, did I write it down? 
I can't open my phone. I got a new phone for reasons that will be explained later, and I have a Touch ID on it, and the Touch ID doesn't not work at all. But, and I'm really debating turning it off, but people have been yelling at me that I should put a lock on my phone. Because <laughs> it could, I don't know. <laughs> people can still hack your phone and get the things off of it, even if it's locked. It just makes it more inconvenient. <laughs> Which I suppose in any security measure, because if people really wanted to kill you, they you just 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 give it to them, man. <laughs> Most of the safety measures are used to disincentivize murder, not pre prevent it. You know what I mean? Anyway, <laughs> I still can't open my phone. What was I even opening my phone to do? Oh yeah, I was looking to uh, see if I wrote down the price. I did not. But I think it was about uh, 1,004, 5, 600 ish. So, like, yeah, very, very cheap. You know, for my first car, very. This was also my first car. I've never bought a car before for obvious reasons. Because I, like, I was, I was in school. I didn't, I didn't need no car. I, I could just borrow. I could just steal cars. I was young and dumb and I had fuel to burn i don't know i mean i don't know what i mean by that <laughs> you can interpret that however you want it's fine but basically uh yeah so this is, a, this is also the first time i was buying a car so that made it extra difficult there was a lot of things that made this difficult but after a month i had the car and i then i immediately ran into issues because it was all the way in the city and i live not in the city and so I got I got out there via um, train and some guy picking me up who works at the car place. Uh, glad I didn't get murdered. He didn't he didn't seem like a murderer. Again, the things that disincentivize murder usually work. So, uh, but to get back, I I don't I had the car, so I had to take the car back, and then I was like sick. So, I pulled up and I didn't know where I was because I took the train. <laughs> And uh, I was like, okay, let's get back. And then I realized that my GPS did not work. <laughs> so that's an issue. So I spent like, it should be like a like a 40 something minute drive, maybe like an hour. I don't remember. It's not a very long drive. It's like 40 minutes, but it took like three hours because I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> the map still worked, just not the GPS. So I just had to like figure out where I was on the map. And, uh, it, it was, a. Uh, I went down some random street. I had to take a weird U-turn. There was a, there was many different things that happened. So I was like, well, dosh, well, gosh, dang. <laughs> I, uh, I need a, I need a new phone. And then, but that took a while. <laughs> and then what happened after that? There was something, I did not have a new, a GPS with the phone for a while, but I was doing things with the car. Blah, 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 blah. I had a pizza for I, I got I went to the Pizza Hut and got pizza. Uh, not very impressive. Japanese pizza and American pizza, pretty Pizza Hut, pretty pretty similar. Not, I mean I think it's smaller and like thinner, but like and more expensive because it's like a foreign special foreign thing. So like worse in that regard but like you know whatever if you want you want good uh greasy big american pizza you gotta go to america you, there's there's plenty of other things but it was good i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it was not good oh yeah i've decided to name the car Ic the icarus because a kid icarus uprising my favorite game ever and i i will name everything off of it if if necessary and B, because I don't remember exactly why. Something about how uh, the story of Icarus is that he flew too close to the sun and burned his legs. So, not the legs, wings. And I was burning my legs going, uh, not having a car. I don't know, man. <laughs> I just think it's a cool name. I had some sort of reasoning. Oh, yeah, I think it was so I don't burn my wings, i.e. my legs. <laughs> That's why. But then why would the car be named that? Wouldn't, shouldn't the bike be named that? I have no idea. Okay. I thought I heard people uh, yelling and throwing rocks at my window. <laughs> Not what's happening. Anyway, so I named it the Icarus because it's designed to do the... I can't... Stupid phone! Okay. Because it's designed to do the opposite of what Icarus does. So that's cool. 
So another reason I got a car is because a, uh, I'm still looking for social things to do because the whole reason I came out to Japan is to go out and explore Japan and do social things and uh, do large gatherings of people, you know. That's, that's the whole reason, you know, and it would really suck if many things prevented that from happening. But early February, uh, there was nothing preventing that. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, I remember, but I still didn't have a GPS because it's all the way in Kodayama. I'm in like Fuku near Fukushima City. So, and I still didn't have a GPS. And I think, I think that's an hour drive. I don't know. It's it's not it's not a very short drive, but it is. It's 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 doable, you know, to go to a uh, bi-weekly Smash tournament. Bi-weekly meaning every other week. I think I looked this up. Bi-weekly can both mean twice a week and every other week. Same thing with bi-monthly, which is dumb. So it's either bi-weekly or bi-monthly or both every other week. So yeah, it's definitely doable. But I still didn't have a GPS, and it was like on a Friday evening and so we're like i barely have time to like after work run over to the tournaments because of like when i get off of work and how late the t and like how far away it is and when the tournament is so i'm like i'm not going to be able to do that without a gps without getting lost so i had like a random tuesday off because i think it was like emperor day or something actually no today is emperor day national foundation day is what I have written in my notes. Don't ask me who that is. So I took a test drive to uh, Kodayama City and found uh, the abandoned warehouse that the tournament was going to take place in. And then I just kind of wandered around. I did get lost, so I'm glad I did this because I still didn't have a GPS and I'm a Zoomer, as we established. I'm a Zoomer-Boomer hybrid, as we established. So I, I don't know how to navigate streets, let alone when I can't even read the street signs. Because some of the street signs are, like, in English, but some of them are just, like, huge, complicated kanji character, and I can't... I'm trying to read... I'm trying to, like, drive and, like, read this really long, like, 2,000-stroke kanji at the same time. It's not... Not very... Not a great time. <laughs> but, uh, what did I get? Oh, yeah. I found... So, wandering around Kodayama Station. Kodayama's... Kodayama City is bigger than Fukushima City, even though it's not the capital, and I don't understand why. <laughs> Anyway, so at Koryama Station, they had an anime store, and of course, I had to get a pin from my favorite anime, Toho. <laughs> so, this is my favorite Toho from the Toho anime. There is an actual Toho anime. That ruins my joke. <laughs> but no, to to Toho is an indie game, if you don't know. If, if you don't know, get out of here, man. You don't, you don't deserve if you don't know what Toho is. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on my pin collection. And or I will always be working on my pin collection, but I'm still working on my pin display area. So that's what's going on with that one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, what was it about? I was gonna say something. I was gonna say some more memes about Toho, but I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> something about how there was a Toho anime. Oh yeah. There, I was gonna say there, there is a Toho anime, but also there's a Toho anime that never got released by Ufotable, and like they they advertised their screenshots, and then they had like a private screening, and then they immediately shut it down. <laughs> and so like five people have seen that anime, and and like a screening, and no none ever since. There's just this amazing Toho anime by Ufotable out there somewhere in the universe. And we'll never be able to see it. And how does that make you feel? Upset. This is not related to anything about me in Japan. Other than I'm angry about it and I'm in Japan. <laughs> so, uh, on February 14th was the first Kodayama Smash uh, tournament that I went to. And again, this is more like, because I try to make this like, general like hey japan vlog kind of thing even though mostly like just the people who watch me watch it i don't know these these, these don't get bad views for like hour long videos speaking of which 26 ish minutes <laughs> but you know for like long videos you don't get they don't get bad views but i try to keep it uh more vloggy related but uh 
So Smash is technically more like nerd related, but uh, it's relevant for this grander narrative that I'm building, I guess. Apparently, supposedly so, of me trying to be sociable in Japan. And basically, what was it? Oh yeah, like that's a social event, right? Like all this other stuff, like doing the canyoning, doing the uh, mountain trip, going out with Dr. Elk. <laughs> Who's my who's my uh, friend who hasn't texted me back yet? <laughs> if you're watching this, please text me back. <laughs> uh, what was I going on about? I someone I got sidetracked and I 100% forgot. Oh yeah, friends and trying to be sociable. So yeah, great great idea. And also, here's another thing: is that because I'm like the English teacher guy, and everybody knows that, uh, they all try to like. I can't. I have trouble practicing my Japanese because everyone just wants to practice their English on me. <laughs> you know, like anyone who's who bothers to talk to me only talks to most. Okay, I'm not gonna say people who talk to me only want to speak practice English, but the people who seek out to speak to me are also so happen to be wanting to practice their English. <laughs> so it has been actually kind of difficult to find, and also like I. Other, like, people I hang out with otherwise have also been, like, doing, like, events and gatherings with uh, for other foreigners. And uh, they, like, they, I think they're, they're, it's it's, uh, it's a little, like, the, the, uh, the vote is out on that one. If uh, foreigners speaking Japanese to each other, how, how weeby that is. But generally, people don't do it. And also, most people here don't even, don't know enough Japanese to do that. So basically, I've had trouble practicing speaking Japanese in Japan because everyone just wants to speak English. But at this Smash tournament, like, that is not the case at all. And people will, like, go off. <laughs> There's zero English. So very good. So every other week, have some, some good some good stuff. I've gone twice. Once on... Does these dates matter? These dates matter. It was twice in February. February 14th and uh to do february 28th and there's a, and there's a special thing about february 28th that we'll get to in a second <laughs> but yeah basically hold on let me let me let me gather gather my my 10,000 thoughts that i'm having at the same time about and decide on which one i should uh discuss so yeah the overall good social thing get to play some video games smash tournaments are always very, like are always like very good to like be more social because it's like anything where you you can do something right like if you don't know what to talk about you can talk about the game right because you're both here for the game first and foremost right so it's always a lot easier to meet people in that place right because like especially me i guess like i think most people would consider me socially awkward but the thing about socially awkwardness is that like how socially awkward you are depends on the situation right so like if i'm just at a random party where where most like most people's stereotypical view of like being social is like just being at a party like there with people i don't know because like there okay i'm a little socially awkward but like at a smash tournament a little better and with like a group of friends i know and like then like i'm like totally like extroverty with that right that in those situations being with other people can give me energy but like in other situations then i'm more introverty because being with people i don't know in situations i'm unfamiliar with i guess that's it like being in situations you're unfamiliar with but i don't understand like they're both social situations right social situation that you're unfamiliar with and social situation of like people you know right because people are like oh if you're an introvert that means that social situations take away energy but like that's not necessarily the case with all social situations so whatever it's stupid anyway point i was trying to make smash tournaments very good social thing because like if I'm out of things to talk about, I'm like, oh, so what do you think about this video game and this particular element of this particular video game? So it's all it's all very good. Except for the fact that I have no idea what they're saying. 
because <laughs> like my, i've been studying japanese for a while i've been i've been studying japanese like forever on and off but like serious studying japanese i've been doing it for a couple of years but the issue with my japanese is that i have textbook japanese so like i don't have casual japanese so like in formal situations like talking to like people at work when their english crumbles apart <laughs> or like the few people at work that don't want to that don't know english at all like i can talk to them and communicate with them if uh, we're just talking of like in business formal textbook japanese but like if i'm going to like a so any like sort of like casual social thing then it's just like it's an entirely different language dude <laughs> so uh but that's the best way to practice just jump into it you know like i can kind of like i it's, it's it is very different like formal japanese and spoken Jap japanese are very different you can make the same case for english because english is like hello i'm from america i like uh, pizza and like this kind of talking right now that I'm doing where I'm just like going off and on and I'm like don't even know what I'm talking about y'all and I'm using weird terms like y'all which is like I think a southern thing it is definitely a southern thing but I'm not necessarily sure where the southern thing started was it because there's like two southerns but I'm assuming since like an old accent I'm assuming it's the south east I still don't know the difference between east and west doesn't matter who cares you get the idea that so like I'm like, oh, he hello, my, my name, and they're like, oh, what's up, how's it going, what are you doing, and then I'm like, ah, two-faced, but uh, that's the best way to practice, just hop into it, you know, then I'm putting, I'm putting my, I'm practicing what I preach, because I'm always like, if you want to get good at something, just hop in the deep end, and as long as it, as long as it doesn't kill you, it will make you better, you know, so yeah, you know, it's, it's, the two times that I went, it was very awkward to communicate with people, but I just learn exponentially, you know, because even if I only understand like 1% of what they said, like if they just say things constantly and I'm just constantly doing it, then I, I can gather, I can increase my, my knowledge that way. So that was a thing. Uh, do I, do we, are we moving on to part two? Okay. We're moving on to part two. So... <laughs> Oh boy, let's, let's, let's. <clears throat> oh boy. Let me make sure I get the dates right on this one. <laughs> on February 27th, they, uh, the apocalypse started. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. Although I've heard people getting having their thing their things taken down if we refer to it directly, so we must we must be we must be in secret. We don't don't tell don't tell our YouTube overlords. But yeah, the 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 apocalypse started in full, like mass hysteria, mass pandemic, mass. Uh, is pandemic a, a word that the overlords will be able to hear? Shh, okay. Everyone quiet. Everyone shh. Don't. Don't. Okay. Anyway. Uh, what was I going on about? Oh, yeah. The apocalypse. So, yeah. Basically, the apocalypse started. And on uh, February 27th, they announced that they were, like, that they were planning on closing the schools and that crap was about to go down and that we all need to panic and run <laughs> and go run for the hills. And then uh, the next day, because that was a Thursday, and then the next day I was like, I want to go to the Sm Smash tournament. Because <laughs> I'm like, if the apocalypse is starting, this may be my last chance. And it was. Because <laughs> that, that was the Friday that uh, everybody in Japan uh, went crazy and started buy mass buying toilet paper because there was like some sort of like rumor. It was Twitter's fault. It's all, all Twitter's fault. There, there's no, like, we have toilet paper again. There was no never any, like... There was no, there was no, there was never any shortage of toilet paper. I don't understand why people. Well, I know why because there was a rumor of toilet paper running out because of the apocalypse. But th that was fine. And I was like, and I saw that. I saw that that morning, and I was like, uh, maybe I should instead of going to the tournament, uh, stockpile on toilet paper. But I'm like, I got toilet paper. It's fine. So I went to, went to the tournament. 
And when I walked into the tournament, they're like, uh, take your temperature. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> they're like, if anyone has any high, I think it was like above 37, uh, non-freedom units. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what 37 translates to freedom units, but, uh, they're like, if you're above, if you're above 37, then you got, you got to you get, we're not allowed in the tournament. So I'm like, uh, that's not necessarily a foolproof way to know that somebody doesn't have the ap apocalyptic curse is what we will call it now, I suppose. <laughs> but I'm like, okay. So I don't think they actually turned anyone down. I think I was like, I was like just in the, I was like 36.9. I think I'm always 36.9. I've done it like several times. It's just my default body temperature. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I did that, then went back, and then uh, during that weekend, I stockpiled. My my family obviously started pa panicking, because I was like, yeah, right? Did I do anything else in February? That was another issue with uh, the lack of social things, is that um, basically all of winter, nobody wanted to do anything anyway. And they're like, oh, we'll wait till, we'll wait till, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till spring to do social things. And I'm like, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> So yeah, basically all of January was just getting the car and then all of February was going to two smash tournaments and there was nothing and waiting for things to start again, like events and stuff to start again in the spring. And then the apocalypse started and canceled all of that, dude. It sucks. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I bought some supplies for the apocalypse. Should I? Yeah, I think I have that picture of just like a pile of, uh, cup noodles because i'm like i haven't actually eaten a whole lot of cup noodles since coming here and that's like a, a a thing so i'm like you know what i need to supply my my family's worried and wants me to stockpile and i want to try out all this stuff anyway so i did <laughs> and i don't think i've actually eaten a whole lot of it because like things currently even though it's like the apocalypse and things are closing down like you can, I, you can, I could at least go to the store and buy some food, right? Like, it's not like, they're not like putting down a giant metal dome over my house, <laughs> over, you know, even though I obviously limit going outside whenever I can. I know I just had the giant carton of uh, milk tea that I just bought, but shut up. Vital, vital cannot live without technically it's water i guess <laughs> i was also buying necessary food stuff at the same time so it, it balances out anyway not important <laughs> what is important is yeah so i stockpiled that that and i think i think that was the last interaction with people i've ever had <laughs> so basically what happened is following that monday like the school like closed down but that basically translates to like for all of March, because I think that was the end of February, right? So then at the beginning of March, yeah, so basically like at the beginning of March, they're like, okay, we're shutting down the school and we're just gonna do the graduation ceremony like now. <laughs> Actually, I think some schools are like, we're doing the graduation ceremony now, and some schools are like, we're closing, and then you can come back for like one day to do the graduation ceremony, because schools in Japan end at the end of March and begin at the beginning of April. So basically, like, the school shut down until, for all of March, until like one day at the end of March where they did the graduation ceremony. But they still had, like, me, like, because, like, I'm like a weird guy, right? <laughs> basically, like, as, like, an assistant language english teacher that works at multiple schools like they don't they had no idea what to do with me so they're just like come in and uh do work on the computer i guess because they still made me come in even though they they closed down the schools all the other teachers also were in the same boat of like yeah this is a pandemic and we're closing down but like eh, at least the kids don't die i suppose so that was a thing <laughs> Uh, and I got, I got some good, I got some good work. I've, I've, I've gotten some good work done. So was that all that happened in March? I think that was all that happened in March. Just going in, working on the computer and then leaving. 
Oh, yeah, something about, I don't know why this is at this point in my notes <laughs> and not with the rest of the car stuff, but uh, I, don't, I don't have a license. <laughs> I'll, I have a uh, international driver's license that is good for one year from my entering of Japan. So in August uh, of this year, August 2020, uh, I will no longer be able to use it. So I need a real Japanese driver's license. And hopefully I'll still be able to do that <laughs> because uh, hopefully things will open up for long enough for me to run and get a license so I can continue using the car. Because if things stay closed for a while and, or past August, then that's going to be an issue. <laughs> it's going to be an issue. <laughs> Let's uh, remind me to uh, look up the, the laws for driving without a license in Japan. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna do that. And I, I'm a good moral person. I still have the bike, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. So I'm working on getting a light. So I'm working on that. <laughs> and really, I should have done this a while ago, because even before I decided to get a car, like I would need a license anyway to rent a car. I suppose. Well, f I'll figure it out. But so I should have done this earlier. But uh. Yeah, I, I couldn't have predicted an apocalypse, okay? I, you, can't give, you can't give me fault for that one. How, you, how was I supposed to know that, that, that an apocalypse was going to start? <laughs> and that I probably should have done this whole license thing sooner rather than later. <laughs> but hey, you know, whatever. What's it going on about? I don't know what I was going on about. <laughs> Uh, that was all of March. It's just like school shut down, but I still have to go in there anyway. And then uh, at the beginning of April, April 6th, the schools opened back up for like a week and a half. <laughs> and yeah, so, oh yeah, that was another thing. Okay, so let's, let's do the, the beginning of school. So like the one issue... Hold on. I have like these tubes to try to keep this effing couch cover on and they don't work. Ugh. Okay. So the, the one issue, can I sit on this side of the couch? Cause I think this side of the couch is slooping and then I'll be closer to the microphone. Hello. Anyway. <laughs> so the one is, so I like, I don't, I've not talked, I've not talked about uh, my actual job. I should make an entire episode about that. Maybe now since like, nothing's happening i could do another episode just talking instead of talking about life stuff just talk about like stuff that is that i've not gotten around to yet like uh the house tour or whatnot but anyway yeah i like it you know obviously i'm i'm one of the few english teachers in japan that actually wants to be an english teacher because i was interested in the field of education outside of japan because uh i mean i think that's that's pretty logical right like doing what I'm doing right now and teaching are not that inherently different you know it's just that teaching is just like more like instead of just ranting and telling you about what about what I've been what's been going on I just be ranting about how to say dog in English and how to pronounce a V <laughs> but yeah no I like it uh I will make an entire episode about it eventually but the one issue is that what did i say before oh yeah i was saying that uh i'm one of the few english teachers in japan that actually wants to teach english P most people are just here for japanese this is a proven fact <laughs> but uh i will say the the one issue is that my position because it's not like i'm just like a regular teacher right like I, you don't need a teaching degree for this job because i'm an assistant teacher so like that creates a very weird like first of all i am not a permanent teacher anywhere like i'm only go to each school i'm only at each school each school only sees me once or twice a week but i still like work a full work week between all of those schools but i just hop around from one so to the school's perspective i just like come in like once or twice a week teach some english and then leave <laughs> but that's just my life so the downside of that is that I'm true that we're fudging 
this is another reason that uh, I have an issue talking about more work stuff because it's very complicated. It's not just like, I, I went to K Kenya and it was cool. It's like, there's a lot of like issues that pile up on this, you know? But basically, yeah, they view me as like a temporary teacher, as like a, as like a, as like a gimmick, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but, like, not as a full, like, staff member, you know? So, and this is mostly a positive because I get out of the boring, like, staff meetings <laughs> and all this other, like, drama that involves with work, but, like, it is very difficult to, like, be a part of... To just be... It's difficult to... How should I put this? To not be viewed as a full-time employee when you're a full-time employee you know what i mean it's it can be kind of aggravating sometimes because like the i mean it can be difficult to for like but listen let, let's just say like most of the all the teachers that i work with all the 50 billion that i work with are all very nice all very all very good i've had a good batch of teachers because everybody is just good and uh i work I do work well with others, you know, as, as much as, uh, I'm antisocial when we're like, when we have a goal and we have like a thing, I can be like, you don't need to be social to talk about work stuff and figure out and do good things. But, uh, what's that going on about? Something about, uh, you don't know. I think here's, here's my theory. Okay. I think that... I'm, try I'm trying to find the nicest way to say this. I think that everyone thinks that the... Everyone thinks... The issue is that everyone thinks everyone is lazy. <laughs> because uh, the to all the Japanese teachers who teach English, who are, like, the main teachers, the English teachers just come in, like, once or twice a week, teach some English, not even as, like, a main teacher, and then leave. And then to the English teachers, like... We're constantly working all the time. We have like a billion schools and we never know what's going on. We always find things out at the last minute. So, uh, and we're never like told anything. So not, not to never told anything, but like it's con it's a constant like running around to all these different schools, constantly busy. So like there's this, there's this disconnect between the Japanese teachers and the English teachers, the Japanese teachers of English. The Japanese teachers who teach English and the the foreigners who teach English, because the Japanese teachers think that we're that we have an easy job. I've heard this before. Before I became an English teacher, there were, I, I've heard I've, I was hearing I was hearing rumors from other Japanese teachers who teach English that they think that ALT that some ALTs are have a, an easy job comparatively. But like, it is just like this this disconnect of like. To Japanese teachers, English te the we English teachers just come in like once or twice a week, teach English and then leave. But to us, like we're constantly running around, and like have difficulty like communicating any of this to the Japanese teachers. So again, this is why I don't talk talk about work stuff because it's very complicated. But like, yeah, the whole the 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 main issue is that. The English teachers, the main issue, the main, the main crux is that English teachers aren't real teachers, <laughs> that uh, we're just like guest teachers. And this creates a lot of problems. I don't remember what I was talking about, why this originally came up, other than that, like, this issue got worse because, uh, staff, like... Basically, at the beginning of the new uh, school year, and at the beginning of April, uh, every I got a brand new batch of teachers. <laughs> like everybody, like even the principals, like all got switched out because like other complicated, other complicated issues. You can you can look it up of why this happens, but it basically yeah everybody switched, and I was not told any of this or at all ahead of time so I basically walked in to the school on Monday and I looked like I sat at the same desk that I sit went to the same school that I go to every day and I looked up from my desk and I was like 
Who are you people? <laughs> Essentially. Because, like, literally everyone was new. But uh, that's the thing that kind of will smooth out eventually. But another issue is that, like, I'm teaching a lot more classes now. Because, like... Yeah, like, the whole English curriculum got changed, and now I'm teaching, like, way more classes than I think I should be, and I should get that, f try to talk to somebody about that, because, like, there's usually six periods in one day, like, six periods of classes in one day, and sometimes I'm told to teach all of them, and I can't prepare at all, <laughs> you know? And I think it might have something to do with the fact that, like, I'm only there like once or twice a, a, a week. So they're like, okay, well, let's get the most out of him. And then the rest of the week he can prepare for classes. But like if every school's thinking that, like, then I'm just constantly teaching and I have no time to prepare and it sucks. But hopefully that'll be fixed. But that's not the main issue at, at the current moment. The main issue at the current moment is that I came to Japan to experience Japan to experience living in Japan and go out, meet new people, and do new things. And I can't because the apocalypse started. <laughs> and the apocalypse is nowhere near ending. I think is just my main point that I wanted to make in this. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, on April 20th, or maybe before then? Was it really April 20th? Was it really... Was it really April 20th that uh they, they closed down the schools? <laughs> Because that's that's funny that they that they closed down the schools on four twenty. <laughs> it's also extra funny because uh, four twenty is super duper. You'll go to jail for the rest of your life. Illegal here, <laughs> which is also very awkward. Which makes some for some very awkward conversations because they're like, yeah, that's just super not illegal in some parts of America, and it's super illegal here, and. Uh, yeah, and you have to be aware of such differences in laws, but that's that's true for anywhere you go. You know what I mean. But anyway, on four twenty, they closed down the schools again, and because they declared a state of emergency, and uh, I was there's something again more more complicated things. My contracting thing put pressure, and I put pressure on people, and basically, I got approved to work from home because i was thinking like i'm just working on like english lessons and lesson plans and whatnot and that stuff can be done here not today obviously because today uh i'm playing hooky no i'm <laughs> today is a holiday today is like emperor day or something i think it's supposed to be part of golden week but it's not <laughs> i don't i have no idea what happened but today not today but because today is a holiday anyway but all the other days surrounding this until the state of emergency is going to supposedly end on uh, May 7th, I think. May 7th? Yeah, May 7th. Or I think it ends on May 6th and then, like, the, the last day of it is on May 6th. And then supposedly the schools are going to open up on May 7th. And then I will go back to doing that then. But I kind of doubt it. I don't know, man. We'll see. Because, uh, so yeah, that's basically, that's basically, uh, the state of things at the moment. Yeah, is that I'm basically currently working from home and waiting for the schools to open up again. And, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting because, like, this whole apocalypse thing, like, nobody knows how long it's gonna go on for. And, like, again, as I said before, my whole, the whole point of coming to Japan was to go out and experience Japan. So now I'm in a very awkward position where like, if this whole apocalypse thing is going to go on for a while, you know, if the end of the world is going to take a while, then like the question of like me still, still being here is an issue because like, it's hard to like go out and meet new people when nobody want, when nobody's allowed to do that, you know? <laughs> and uh i'm not like near my family at all or near anyone else so like it's just it's just being alone forever <laughs> so at that so if this whole apocalypse thing is going to continue on 
forever, then the question of me, why am I still in Japan comes into an issue, right? Because, like, if I came here to experience Japan, go out, do fun things, and, you know, because I could still do my job, I guess, sometimes, intermittently, between the schools closing down, and I still have money, right? Because they, they still, even when I'm just working on lesson plans and not actually teaching, then I'm still getting money. Because I'm still working, even though it's not the kind of work I want to do. You know. So the question of, do, do I even need, should I even still be here? It comes into question, which does suck because like, yeah, the issue of like, Man, it's a, it's a complicated. <laughs> Basically, if the the world if po the apocalypse is going to continue on for some time, and it seems like it's going to, because I can only be here a maximum of three to five years. So if this is a, and I've already been here almost one year, it will be one year at the end of. I got here at the beginning of August, so a uh, couple of months, right? May, June, July, three more months until a year. So like. I would only have like two to four years left and if the apocalypse is going to last for two to four more years then the question of like well should I even be here or should I go back to the states to the to the United States of America and try to do something else and try to like get a more permanent job because it's not like necessarily like I'm just I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this that so it doesn't sound too depressing. <laughs> but basically, uh, if I can't do any of the things I wanted to do out here, then I gotta go, right? It sucks. Just cut my losses and leave, and go back to America and get a job there. But uh, and then maybe come back to Japan when things are all settled. Except like. It would be hard because, like, the only the only reason I'm able to do this as freely as I am, I pack up my stuff and leave for Japan for five years, or a question mark amount of years, is because I'm right out of college and like I need to build my resume anyway. So being having a teaching job for several years would be would would help me get a full job. You know what I mean? But uh. So, like, it wouldn't make sense to come back at any point. So, like, if I leave, then I'm not coming back. And that would suck. That, like, this whole apocalypse cut this whole adventure short. <laughs> by basically, uh... To potentially five years to, uh, like, eight months. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see. So, well, you know, we're currently... I'm currently... I signed back in December I signed here's my current position back in December I signed an intent to resign so I'm gonna be here at least until August the end of July the beginning of August 2021 so but I think I can uh but like but if I get to the end of my first year right I'm sure it wouldn't and if I get to the my the end of July and I'm still like it's the the apocalypse is still happening I'm sure it wouldn't I'm sure I could convince someone to I'm sure I can convince I'm sure I could get out of the contract not resign for another contract despite the fact that I saw, signed an intent to resign I'm sure they would they would understand right cuz I think they've given me that out before cuz they're like oh by the way uh they're not going to let anyone back into um, uh, Japan from America so and they might do the opposite soon enough so if you want to if you want to see your family again you should leave now is basically what they said and um because they're like we don't know how long this apocalypse is gonna go and we don't know if you'll be able to even leave soon enough but I'm like well I job I get we'll see how this goes out so basically I'm hoping, because I have a big plan to visit the States. I had a big plan from, like, before the apocalypse started to visit the States in the summer. But if I'm not allowed to come back, then that might be an issue. So, uh, yeah, my current plan is to uh, hope that the apocalypse ends. 
and but it, and uh, I think it's in December. If it's the same as last year, then it'll be in December where they'll ask if I want to stay for another year. So I'll probably be here another 12 plus three months. <laughs> Like, at the very least, unless something really goes down and I have to abandon ship in ju in the summer at some point. But, uh, I don't know. As long as it stays around here, then I'll probably stay for another year and three months. But, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Because we don't know how long the apocalypse could be started. Because, like, there's several theories flying around saying that, like, oh, it'll go away immediately don't worry about it and there's other people like oh this is gonna be a yearly thing it's gonna keep coming back year after year and it's gonna be a while and i'm like oh boy so that's currently my plan is that hope it goes away <laughs> hope it, hope for the best <laughs> and continue to uh do what i can man you know again i texted dr l and he didn't text me back and he might he might. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I only texted him once and it wasn't a particularly engaging text. So, you know, he probably just saw it and was like, cool, and then moved on. I'll text him later. It's fine. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So just hope that the apocalypse ends is basically my plan. And uh, we'll. Uh, reassess we'll we'll reassess in the summer if this if by the summer it's still like super duper bad then i'm gonna abandon ship but i'm gonna try to stay for my what i agreed to <laughs> basically because i i agreed to stay here until 2021 the summer of 2021 but uh i'm sure i could convince some people to get out of it i could just leave <laughs> and not be able to come back and be like oh well you know <laughs> I, I i would i would can fill out the i would fulfill the rest of my contract if i could but you know just talk to the border police about that one <laughs> and they'll uh they'll send a they'll send a, a gray van a gray inconspicuous van and they'll they'll sneak me across the border which is the pacific ocean i think i get the atlantic and pacific oceans mixed up it doesn't i'm I'm bad with names. Nobody need no. Who needs names for anything? What the hell? But anyway, yeah, I will. I will be. I will be. I will do my very best. It would have to be really bad. It would have to get like worse than it currently is for me to want to jump ship, uh, in July. So my current plan is to see, feel how things go in December, and if it's in December. If things are really bad, then I'll leave the following summer. But crossing my fingers, I don't want, you know, I liked I liked the first couple of months of being here. You know, there was a lot of difficulties. There was a lot of adjusting to things. But, you know, I overall liked it and wish to continue, you know. But again, if, if that is unavailable, then just like it sucks. Just cut my losses, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, what was I gonna say I think I think that's pretty much it I think I've said all I wanted to say I tried to I tried to uh, phrase it as uh, nicely as I could but uh, the reality of the situation is it sucks I don't even think I don't even think they're doing any like they're hiring any new like they're supposed to be like a new round of uh, teachers coming in the summer but because Pete some people's contracts are ending and they need to be replaced but like I don't think they're doing that. I don't think they're doing that any. I think they canceled that for this year. <laughs> so, uh, but again, like theoretically, uh, we are temporary teachers and assistant teachers and aren't 100% necessary to teach the class, I suppose. So, do we have a non necessary job? If you think about it, all jobs are necessary because you need you you it's necessary for me i need money i need money to live <laughs> this job is necessary for me and who's to say what who's to say that like a theater broadway show is not a necessary job if it can give you joy if it can shave off 
the, the depression for another day or two. What's to say that's not that's not necessary? I don't know what I'm going on about anymore. <laughs> uh, I will leave you on this. Oh, well, I'm not going to leave you on this. I just want to say this. <laughs> it's basically like, when I came here, obviously I knew that it's not, that's not going to be exactly what I expect and that uh, there's going to be some problems and there's, it's, it's, there's going to be some things, there's going to be some hardship. It's not going to be exactly what I envisioned it. And I was aware of that, but I wasn't, aware that the problems that I was going to run into I was aware that it's not going to be exactly what I how I imagined it I just ne definitely I just definitely imagined that it would not be this apocalyptic you know <laughs> cuz like I'm like I'm sure there's going to be something that I have no way of knowing that's going to be a huge issue but it's fine I'll get over it but and then the universe was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> How do you like this apocalypse? And I'm like, oh, you know, you got me there. You got me there, man. I will I will concede on that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll get, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm, I'm staying optimistic. I'm, I'm going to continue to stay optimistic and hope for the best and continue uh, doing whatever I can, you know? Uh, I've, I'm have, uh, I've been getting a lot of like, listen, ever since I got here, I've been getting stares cause I'm a white guy, obviously, but I have, I got this like mask. I have this like mask cause like, I don't want to die. And it's like, and they're running out of masks at the store. So, uh, my family, uh, sent me a, another mask and it has dinosaurs on it <laughs> and, uh, nobody else. Ha and now all the stares before it was like. The stairs were like trying not to stare kind of stare kind of like the uh and now the stairs are like double takes or like because <laughs> people are just not expecting me to just wear the silly dinosaur mask but i love it and i will find a picture of it i have it but i don't want to i just it's, it's over there i think but it's i need to wash it it's fine <laughs> but i'll send i'll put a picture on it you know i'll put a picture up it's fine so is that, is that, always like, is that all what I was going to say? This video is like an app about an hour. So to review, uh, I got a car. It took it took a while, and uh, the Japanese people, the all the companies did, would not give me cars, but a foreign guy gave me a car. If I gave me a car, I mean sold it to me legally. <laughs> um, I went to a Smash tournament. I liked the Smash tournament, and then the apocalypse happened, and destroyed everything but you know again i'm staying optimistic like this is this is not great this is not super dandy but you know I, i'm staying optimistic and i'm gonna continue to fight the good the good fight isn't that something about i don't remember i want to say that, that there's some racist con connotation with fighting the good fight But uh, let's say uh, fighting fighting the noble fight. That also sounds bad. That just sounds like a war propaganda. <laughs> Every time I say things like that, I am continuing to. How about instead of saying fight, let's say work hard to uh, be happy and accomplish my my goals and make friends and uh, continue being optimistic and happy and finding uh, happiness in life despite this and i'm staying optimistic i'm doing all i can i'm doing i will find ways to be happy and uh, i think you all should too because you know obviously like my situation sucks because like i came out here to go and experience japan and i can't do that and it ruined my one and it's ruining my once in a lifetime opportunity but like I know it's a lot worse for other people, you know. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I know I'm one of the lucky ones. There's people doing way worse than I am. So you know, to uh, everyone, just uh, keep, keep going, man. Just stay, stay optimistic. I'm going from like having a billion thoughts and being silly to trying to be heartfelt. But uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm communicating these very comp complex layered emotions as much as I can. But the overall message that I want people to know is that like, yeah, it sucks and is awful and horrible and uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot that, there's sometimes not a whole lot that we can do to all these horrible, awful things. But what we can do is we can have a positive attitude and we can keep uh, trying it to fight against this. I keep going back to fight. I don't like the word fight for whatever reason. But let's just say fight. We can continue fighting against this. We can continue trying to pursue happiness. How about that? Instead of fighting against the apocalypse, let's say uh, pursuing through the apocalypse and trying to find happiness. You know? Doing our best and all that nonsense. Basically what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm, I'm continuing. I'm not giving up. I'm continuing to go forward. So, so should everybody else. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Japan Story Times uh, Apocalypse Edition. <laughs> Apocalypse Edition. Uh, next time, I might do that. When next time might be, uh, if this apocaly apocalypse continues going on, the next Japan Story Times might just be about like random factoids. So, look forward to that. So, until next time, uh,. Until the, the until next time for the next apocalypse that I cover in this series. I will see you all in the next one. Do you have anything to say? Oh, I see. Okay. Hmm, yeah, see? There you go. Said, she said all that needed to be said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Hope you all continue staying positive and uh, pursuing happiness and all that good stuff. And uh, so will I, so should you, and so should that bird that just flew by. That bird's doing good. We should all be like that bird. That bird just flying by. <laughs> and I think he had like a worm or something. He's, he's Or he's looking for dinner. He's fine. We should all be that bird is all, all I'm saying. He, that bird is flying. That bird, that bird doesn't care about all the horrible things that are happening in the world. That bird is just doing his best to stay safe and be happy. And that's all that we should do is we should do our best to stay safe and be happy, you know? And uh, I should just click the end button because I, I think that's all I got, man. Uh, I want to I wanna, like throw something, but here, we'll, we'll, speaking of birds, I will show you guys the squishy bird as a reward for going through all that uh, melodrama. So here you go, squishy, squishy, squishy. It's squishy, 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 squishy. It's squishy, 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 squishy. Okay, yeah. Stay safe, stay happy, and uh, see you all in the next time. See you all in the next time. Yeah, okay. Goodbye. <gasps> okay.